you know, the right to a civil trial, the right, I mean, you lose all that. Because somebody drives by in a golf cart, says, oh, somebody's parking on the street, they pull out their little HOA fine card, and they stick it in your mailbox. And that, that is the, or they send it to you in the mail. So it's in the mail. But to me, I mean, that's what I think the crux of this, this argument. If the city has regulations, cite them. Take it them. So that they at least have the chance to go down to civil court and argue their case in front of a judge. Or a magistrate, or a JP, or whatever. But to, to allow an unelected, and they're technically unelected, even though the HOA will say that they're elected. I've had this discussion with my other HOA. They don't have law-making authority to take away property or liberty or anything along those lines. HOAs do not have that authority. And when you send me something and you're going to put a lien on my house, that's taking away my property. And I just don't see how they have the authority to do that. Now, if you want to enter a gated community and set up all these rules or you know, you have some sort of strict control of everybody that comes in and out and where everybody could park, and you know, that's a different story. But on a public street, you know, I just I just have a hard time finding the argument without trampling over four amendments in the Constitution. Okay? Yeah. Senator yeah. Antonor, you, you make good argument. The the policy that I see in there is that the HOAs have created additional legal requirements under contract through the city and then through the documents that they sign with each other. Now, if you want to get rid of all those documents, if the cities are willing to back off and the the restrictions are removed in the HOAs to bring them down to the same level where everybody else was before the HOAs came. I'm okay with that because then everybody's treated fairly. But I don't want to see police officer that I expect to see come down my street not be there because he's in some HOA writing off parking no, tickets. To that point, I mean, this... Sorry, this I'm, I'm, I'm with uh, In my subdivision, which is an HOA subdivision with public streets, the city of Tucson actually has no parking lot on those narrow streets in the subdivision that say no park. Okay? And guess what? Nobody parks there. Okay? If someone does park there, somebody in the neighborhood gets on the phone, they call Parkwise. Parkwise doesn't send a cop out. They send a contracted guy out that's been contracted through the city of Tucson to issue a public parking citation. A parking citation. And then they drive off. I mean, I, I think that is the reasonable way to enforce parking standards. You have, you could either, the city can do it through contract or they can do it through, there's a lot of companies out there that do parking enforcement on contract in municipalities. You can hire them. And then guess what? It makes money for the city. It makes money for the city and the, the, it creates jobs if you do that technically. But but the, what you're talking about, and I've seen this in, in some words, people, particularly in some of the communities that I represent, where there are people that have nothing else to do all day but to drive around in golf carts and stick stuff in people's mailboxes. And that, I think, is the problem. Yeah, so, I agree with you. I mean, there are the, the HOA boards that have their members that are the exuberant ones that want to keep everything expand and right. they're the problem folks in this whole thing but my issue is still we have many areas in the cities that fall under the old CCNRs the HOAs were created under a different set of standards and if we're going to get into this then those standards and those HOAs need to be removed because they should not enjoy any better policing enforcement than the other areas of the city that fall under the old CPNR. That balances the equation. The point that you, you just stated earlier when you, you, uh, you discussed with Senator Barco that the city of Phoenix created standards. This is the width of the municipal street. This is a, a main thoroughfare. This is, you know, you, you, you set the cities are able to set those standards and they're able to set park, parking regulations based on the width of that street. They've also had uh, prohibitions against certain types of vehicles being parked in residential areas. They have that. Pima County, I know, has one, because I ran a bill to kind of change that last year with the F-350 pickup truck. But, I mean, you, you have already in place 
ordinances and, and laws and, and, and standards that are applicable to the law that are able to be used to enforce parking standards. And you do, the problem here is who has the authority to impose those standards? If it's a public street, it should be the government and the of that jurisdiction. If it is a private street, it should be the private owner of the private street. And that's where I think we're, if we focus the argument here on, on those two criteria, I think it's pretty clear where, you know, most people will come down. I, I have no problem with private property regulation. Should property be owned in an HOA or community owner? Put a gate on it, tell everybody the rules, here's the deal, it's our street. Fine. But a public street, paid for with public tax dollars, maintained by a public entity with full access to the public, uh, to those streets, that anybody can come in and park for whatever reason, I think, I think you've got to let the concept of, of the process of government and due process intervene and allow those people an opportunity to, to address their grievance or problems to an elected body or a, a judge or a court, not, not some guy in a golf cart. <laughs> I agree with what you're saying. Those, the real private subdivisions that were built with substandard streets, tried to come into this, get the city to buy the streets, and we wouldn't do it unless they built the streets to, to, to their own standards. But what I'm saying is the HOAs that we have today have new regulations. And this is what Senator Barco is bringing up on the parking and, and what they can do. If we're going to get into this, those need to go away. But those were agreements between the city, the developer, and when they created the development agreement and the HOA documents, they put an additional burden on anybody that lived in the HOA. Consequently, to me, the issue, if, if, if you want to argue the public street, then they should be held at the same level of enforcement that all the other public streets are at. And that means every HOA that's out there, those special requirements need to go away. Because we should not have to put an additional lease load in there to cover that kind of operation. And if we did that, then I think the problem goes away, everybody's happy. Okay. Well, since Mr. Chair, the point again then, then another solution would simply be to deputize someone in that neighborhood and give them the authority, the right to ticket, and make it a ticket, a parking ticket, that goes through a civil court where you can again address your grievances, like you, you have a right under the Sixth Amendment to do so in this country, and make your case in front of a judge. But what's, what you, what Senator Bartow's problem is here is that's not the case. It, it is someone that uh, attaches a fine for violating the CCNRs, and if you refuse to pay that fine, they put a lien on your home. Again, that's the idea of the Eighth Amendment problem comes in. Because now you have technically somebody that is putting a condition on my private property without due process. And so if you want to do what you're saying, then let's make it a civil traffic ticket, a civil parking ticket, and say that the HOAs have no authority unless their entity has some sort of law enforcement part of what Ohio does with his property, I think I'll stand that out there. Right? So you give them you give them that authority, they write a ticket. And from what I understand, he has to give them ticket for where they can write the ticket. And they gotta show up in court if the guy wants to challenge the ticket court. And the guy that did the parking sent the ticket, not the poor homeowner who had the poor guy park in front of his house. And I, I think that is the crux of the argument here. So, you know, if you, if you want to go that way, I think that's and to that to that point, Mr. Chairman and Senator Antonori, statute allows that remedy uh, in our powers of municipalities section. It says a municipality has authority to carry out the provisions of this article, including entering into contracts or leases with developers of housing development projects containing CCNRs regarding the use of the property for residential purposes. So they could do exactly that. What you're doing is then saying that I have a taxpayer that lives in an area that is not an HOA, 
am going to have to fork money over for another program to take care of the people that live in the special HOAs around the valley. And my guess is there's a lot more HOAs today than there are the old neighborhoods with the growth that's happened in the last 40 years. And I think I like a little bit what Senator Antonori said, and that is give somebody in the HOA the ability to write it for them. Deputize them, whatever, but get the city out of the middle of it, not their fight. And to that point, Mr. Chairman, Senator Nelson, okay. nothing stops the city from doing that at this point in time. Um, and, and to your other point about the CCNR parking regulations going away, that would happen automatically with this bill. And so enforcement, so much more enforcement that you're uh, assuming is going to be put on to a local law enforcement agency is not going to happen because the overnight parking, the on-street parking laws, regulations will not be there anymore unless the city uh, deems that that's necessary or if citizens stand together and say this is an unsafe uh, issue, we want a variant. I think we're opening up another town line if we start getting into that because there are a lot of folks out there that believe in those contracts and that have probably reason to file a lawsuit against the cities if they weren't required to be the normal people that they have to go back in and, and arbitrarily take all those laws off the book without us knowing what that means to every HOA in the state. I think we're opening up another can of arms. Because you've got HOAs that are multi-million dollar homes, they're high the towers, they're single family residential subdivisions that kind of not and now they're down in the, under the hundred thousand <laughs> with some of the older ones. But I think just the this bill, the way it is written, does not consider all the ramifications. The intent is well in the intention, but I think there are hidden costs and, and problems that are going to come up. Uh, it's never come up in anything else other than this very narrow language. And I've had a problem with it for years. And if, if, if it's going to happen, there needs to be at least the cities, the counties, uh, police departments, what have you, working with some of the HOAs and non-HOAs, craft these laws. Now, the old subdivisions, even with the guidelines, I had a young boy killed with a motorcycle that's running out from between parked cars. There was no way we could stop parked cars on the street. Now, if you're going to say you can never park on the street, then you're making an assumption that the lot sizes are large enough that they have places to park either off street or along the street that has gaps in it so that people can see pedestrian traffic. It is not fun to hold a neighborhood meeting over the death of a young child because they got hit from running out in parked cars. So I, I just think there's a whole bunch of issues that, and while this is well intentioned, I can't support because I don't think it really solves the problem that creates more as we go forward. <laughs> and you get that maybe more from police and the law enforcement folks who you're asking to take on additional work when it was never in the books as part of the HOA requirement. And if that's the case, and they have to do it, then maybe there's a special HOA fee that gets added to pay for the additional policing they have to pay. Anyways. I would just make the last point, Mr. Chairman.